Hello, I'm David Tower, and welcome to the Theories of Everything program Viewers, on Channel 3. In previous programs, we've examined a number of aspects of the universe and space-time. We've looked, in fact, at the nature of space-time and reality on several shows, and we've also examined the nature of dark matter and the nature of dark energy that seems to permeate space as well as the normal galaxies and stars. So we've been around a whole lot of areas relating to space-time, the universe, etc. And for a long time, uh, the whole concept of multiple universes or parallel universes has been with us as well. Right, in fact, from early 1957 when Hugh Everett uh, proposed the multiple worlds interpretation, a number of parallel universes, basically. And going back even further in quantum theory to the nature of the superpositions or nature of multiple states of entities including our own universe and there's been a vast amount of work ever since. So in this update series we'll focus basically on the whole concept of multiple universes or as it's now termed the multiverse. In recent, very recent times, in fact particularly since the last uh, map survey was done, the survey of the cosmic background radiation, the, the, the variations in temperature and density of our universe. Since that time, there's been a much greater consensus among physicists and amongst cosmologists on how our universe really is, its real shape and its context. This consensus has risen just recently, in fact, in the last uh, six months to new, to new levels. And it's for this reason that we're going to examine the whole concept of, of the multiverse as it's now termed, and as has it been written recently in, uh, in uh, publications such as New Scientist, examined recently in Scientific American, etc., major articles dealing with it. So it's timely that we do this. So what, what is the new evidence? Well, the consensus only arises because there is new evidence. The conjectures may have been around for a long time, and some of the theory, but the evidence is pouring in. The major evidence is in the uh, shape of the fluctuations in temperature in the cosmic background is picked up by the latest map satellite and now analysed. And those fluctuations, those variations of one part in a hundred thousand show by their size, by their shape, by their geometry that uh, in fact space is flat. They would be a different size, a different geometry if space was curved over or if it was um, of a different shape, a donut shape, for example, spherical shape, any number of shapes, but it appears to be flat and it appears, therefore, that space is either very large or, in fact, infinite. That's the first major, major piece of evidence and that will be confirmed over the next few years by further satellites, by further analysis. The second major piece of evidence relates to uh, the structure of the galaxies. In our, in our particular part of the multiverse, in our universe. Basically, the gal galactic distribution of matter, the matter distribution in our universe, has been uh, initially it clusters, smaller galaxies, larger clust clusters of galaxies, super clusters, but at a certain point, it all levels out, and matter, the distribution of matter, becomes fairly standard, becomes, if you like, uh, routine. And therefore, if in fact our universe is just a tiny, tiny speck in a larger multiverse, that type of distribution would probably continue into the rest of space. And therefore there must be, unless there's very special circumstances in our universe, there must be matter, galaxies, stars, planets and life right through the multiverse at large. So these are the two major pieces of, of uh, evidence. The uh, understanding that space is flat and the understanding that matter permeates in a fairly routine, random way the whole multiverse will be beyond our universe as it continues. There is no barrier. There is no sign that says stop, space ends here anymore. It just continues. So the ramifications of that, and you can call that as uh, uh, Max Tegmark did in the recent uh, Scientific American article, you can call that a level one multiverse, where there are likely to be virtually an infinite number of our Hubble volumes, or our universes, if you like, 
different compositions, uh, but the same laws of nature, the same sorts of constants, the speed of light, the charge of the electron, uh, the mass of the electron and subatomic particles, those remain constant, but different initial conditions, different fluctuations at the beginning, causing slightly different, different um, distributions of matter and so forth. And if, if space is infinite, if the multiverse is infinite in size, you will inevitably repeat exactly the situation we have here today. It, you will repeat, in other words, you and I and everything on this planet and everything in this universe. And you will repeat that if space is infinite, an infinite number of times. So we exist in an infinite number of other universes. We also will be doing all sorts of other different things, and in many universes, of course, we won't exist. Uh, you're beginning, perhaps, to see, viewers, the glimmerings of the ramifications of this new expansion of our knowledge, this new theory, this new expanded theory of the multiverse. And we'll reassess the ramifications at the end of the, sh of the program. Now, viewers, we come to the level two type multiverse. 